So today I thought we'd talk about email. Now, I don't know about everyone else's relationship with email, but mine is definitely sort of a love hate, but very more on the spectrum of hate than love. <laughs> but you know, it's something that is, is, I find really difficult at times, but there are a lot of things that we can do, I think, to make email a lot easier. So there was, a, there was a, an article that I shared here called the one touch to inbox zero and i shared this in the slack group uh, a while ago and this reading this article really changed a lot of things for me i'd heard people talk about inbox zero for for a while and i heard people you know friends of mine kind of bragging about it they're like oh well, i'm i'm an inbox zero or type of person I, I couldn't really i couldn't really figure it out i'm like who cares i've got millions of emails in actual fact i thought that was more of a badge of honor than inbox zero. I've got so many emails. Look at the number of notifications on my phone. But reading this article actually made this whole concept of inbox zero a lot more clearer and meaningful to me. And there's an analogy that this dude, Tiago Forte, has where he, he talks about having this mailroom that's just stuffed and crammed with all kinds of things. You've got your 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 reminders and you've got your overdue bills and you've got your personalized postcard and and that's why i think he's right here it feels as though email is a bit of a placeholder for lots of stuff and that's and that's a little bit of a problem because i i, I what you know i i'm guessing this might be similar to a lot of people's experiences but i would sort of go oh, okay i've got this this email i need to follow up with so i'm going to keep that in my inbox and i'm going to flag it like this and then it never gets actioned and then it just becomes this big jumbled mess that you just stuff just keeps coming in all the time. And, uh, and his, his, you know, his suggestion, I, I found this really helpful is to, if you just scroll through all this stuff, but there's somewhere, yeah, basically what his suggestion is, a lot of these things just don't belong in email. You know, they should be in your calendar. They should be in your task manager. You should be in your reference app. They should be in your, your reading queue or whatever. They don't belong in email. And I think this is, this is something that really, really clicked for me. So the, the suggestion he has is when stuff comes in your inbox, you should just, if there are ways, quick, easy ways that you can just actually just put it in the right tray or put it in the right place so that it becomes more meaningful and actionable. actionable. Let's say there's an email that it's really got chocker full of loads of really useful information that you're going to need to reference at some point. Maybe for Rajita, you're, you're putting together a thesis and, and this email comes in and it's a, a reply from a colleague that's got all these great ideas and like, oh, I really need to, to, to get hold on to that. That's something that might be better placed, positioned in a reference app. It might be more better, easy, you know, better to, to it's, it's in context, et cetera. So, you know, that's a kind of example. Also, actually, uh, one, one thing that Elena mentioned, and this is a really good one. This is, this is one that, this is a behavior I find myself doing that's still a remnant of the past where I have these emails. I'm like, yeah, I need to reply to that, but not right now, but I will do at some point. What I'm trying to train myself to do is turn that into a to-do list item. So every email that I reply to that I can't reply to straight away, I will create a to-do um, item for that. And actually, I'll, I'll just show you the way that I, I triage my email here. So say, for example, this is Google. This is just a, a notification that I've got a new response to virtual assistant application. I'm just going to archive that. It's not really um, of that much use to me. I also try and unsubscribe from as much as I can, which is something also that, you know, any notifications, any, any emails, this is, these are all just, you know, things that I can. And so what I'm doing here is I'm pressing E to automatically in archive. This is a, this is a, a, a an email list signed up recently that helps with accountability. Now, I want to fill out my daily tracker so it will remind me of uh, what I need to do tomorrow. So what I'm going to do is, you, on, if, on your t I use things, and things has this quick capture method. It, sorry, things is a, a to-do list application. So if I press Control-Alt uh, space, it will automatically import the subject line of the email and the context and also the, the URL as well of the email uh, itself. And so I can just kind of go, okay, I need to fill in my daily tracker. And uh, I'm going to set that for today. And so I don't have to worry. I can, I can now I can archive this email, but I know that it's still captured in the place where I go through my, where I manage my to-do lists instead of, you know, my to-do items. And I can prioritize that compared to everything else rather than just like sit in an email, you know, just waving its, waving its hand at me whenever I'm in email. So there we go. Like email in inbox zero. Actually, I, I also kept, so 
yeah, there are a whole bunch of things like really good practices that this article outlines. What one one as well, which I used to have. I used to have like multiple email inboxes. I had like one for I don't know like email subscriptions and one for I don't know this and that. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to put it all in one place. It's much easier to manage just in the one place. There's also this unroll.me. Like I use this for all my mailing lists. And if I, so if I just take, um, and what onroll.me does is it basically puts all your subscriptions, you can just roll them up into this one email digest. So I literally, I just go through and I scan the headlines, right? So unroll.me produces this thing and I can just kind of go, yeah, am I, these are email lists that maybe, you know, I still want to be informed. You know, this is, this is a freelancers uh, union. This is a friend's email list. You know, there are things I still want to be, you know, that sometimes have relevant stuff, but quite often it's just like, you know, it's stuff I can just scan, ignore, and that, and then just carry on with my day. So that's, that's helpful. In actual fact, my, my Unroll Me account is, is actually pretty ridiculous. I think I have like thousands of, of email lists because people subscribe you to stuff all the time. And, and this is just a really, really great way of just, just making sure that, you see, so I've got 1,552 <laughs> things. Literally, I, I just add everything to unroll.me. And then if I see, if I'm like, oh, actually, there's some of, this, some of this stuff that actually I do want in my inbox, I'll take it out of there. But usually everything I'm subscribed to, and people are terrible at this, they'll just subscribe you to everything without your knowledge as well. You know, every single time you, you create an account for an app, you're subscribed to a mailing list. And those are real pains. It's just such a, a time suck to have that stuff. Okay, so, so that's that. So manage everything from Gmail. Like there are all these, I could go through all of these one by one, but of course I don't have time for that. And, and to be honest, like just, the, just follow what the article says. I think, you know, that will, that will get you, uh, that's like sort of the 80-20 of email management. There are some additional things that I have found handy around email management. In actual fact, I'm going to mention this one first. So sometimes let's say, you know, there, someone has a really cool lead magnet and something that's going to be really useful and you just want the freaking PDF, but they're like, give me your email address. And they won't, they won't stop. You know, they, they just want your email address so much. Well, I have this little like uh, trick with this and, and it's not that well known, I don't think, but it's, it's basically a way of, well, first of all, it's a way of creating disposable email addresses. And you may have come across these, you know, a, a really well-known one is Mailinator, which will just kind of spin up kind of a fake email address for you. And it will be a temporary one, but a better solution than that, because one, one of the problems with Mailinator is a lot of the email addresses it will give you are blacklisted. So those people giving those fancy lead magnets, they know that, oh, sorry, a lead magnet, by the way, is like a downloadable PDF that will give you the top five reasons why you should, I don't know, do something. And, and so Mailnator is good to give you these temporary email addresses, but the problem is they get blacklisted by the people who run these email lab magnets, right? So a solution for that is this thing called 33 email. What it is, is it gives you disposable email addresses, but you can link it to a domain. So I actually, <laughs> so you can link it to, you know, whatever domain you want. I generally don't recommend like you link it to a domain that you're using for your website or this or that. Um, because this, these are just disposable email addresses, but it's a catch all, right? And so you can, so if you register a domain, uh, and what I like to do is I like to go for a really, really short domain, a good place to find domain names, instant domain name search, which this will basically allow you to, as, as, as soon as you search. So, so for example, you know, if we did QWERTY, obviously QWERTY isn't going to be available, but if we took, you know, if you took, if you basically like, Kind of went from one end of the keyboard to the other uh, and back and forth we probably find some good easy domain names eventually see there we go that's like one two three four five letters long oh wait hold on well oh, there was one anyway you, you just play around with it you know and you maybe you pick like the, the middle of the keyboard and the other side there we go you know so that's very handy so that's email aliases there are ways like if you have a domain name you can basically, let's say, you know, uh, uh, let's say it's, you know, akimbo.com, right? You have the domain or, or whatever it may, you know, like rossalgado.com. You can create aliases for that email address. So you could have like info at ros, rossalgado.com. You can have contact rossalgado.com. You can register those with your name registrar 
or your hosting company. So I do this with Bluehost and I just spin up loads of them for, for my, you know, sometimes it's like help, support, sponsorships, this and that. That is possible. I'm probably not gonna go into that because it's a little bit technical, but just, just be safe in the knowledge that it is possible um, and you can do it for free because a lot, of, a lot of hosting companies are sneaky and they try and make you think that you have to pay for that feature, but you don't. And you can manage it all from your, your Gmail account. So for example, I could send email as, I don't know, I have, a, I have a whole bunch of people set up, different aliases set up. So I could be like Jonathan at spotlightpodcasting.com, Jonathan at and all this, all this fancy pantsy stuff. So, so that's kind of handy if you wanna, so for example, I, I do like a newsletter uh, that's, that's pod brief called pod brief. And so I have a Jonathan at podbrief.nyc email. And when I email people, I wanted them to see my pod brief email signature, right? I don't want to see like any other random stuff or whatever. So, so, you know, this is my, my, my standard email signature for my Gmail address, but I've got all these, I'm actually like, I've got an alias for clients and stuff like that, because sometimes I have to pretend to be my clients, but say for example, like, okay, so if I take the pod brief one, you see, it's got my like, my logo, which I actually have to update here, um, but it's got all the, the pub brief, you know, specific stuff there, which is quite good. You can set up signatures in, uh, in Gmail uh, that are specific to email addresses. Cool, so that's that sort of aliases. One thing I have found about those aliases, especially with Bluehost, like Bluehost is good, you know, you can get like a, an account that will allow you to host multiple, like unlimited websites, super cheap and stuff like that. You get one of those shared accounts and stuff like that, but, what I have found with those aliases is so, like sometimes stuff will go to spam. Like your, yeah, so they, because it's shared hosting, it's not like sometimes stuff gets blacklisted because there are other naughty people sharing the same servers with you. It gets technical, but that's, that's a little bit of a downside. It's not a big downside. You just have to check your spam folder and sometimes other people have to check their spam folder too. But, you know, better thing would be managed hosting, but also that's where G Suite comes in handy. G Suite is basically, you know, it's basically Gmail, but for businesses or, 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 you know, having your own domains and stuff. So I actually, uh, they used to give out free accounts for G Suite and I didn't sign, I didn't sign up at the time, but now they, they, now you have to pay, but it's not that much. You know, it's like, I don't know, five bucks or something this month. Uh, yeah. A month or something like that. When you do sign up, I do recommend like, you, you can just Google like, like G Suite hacks, promo codes, whatever. And th this, this guy, like this guy has a whole guide, which I'm, I'm actually sort of 30% way through where he just shows you how to like save lots of money on, on your G Suite account and how you can like link up not just one account, but several accounts and this and that. Anyway, I'm not going to go into that, but it's, it's there for in case that's a, a, an avenue you want to go down. Now, in addition to all to email management, something I find very handy, like one of the best email plugins I've come across is Streak. Some of you may know it already, but what it's, it does quite a few things and it has a really generous uh, free plan. And this will make your life a lot easier if you're trying to do bulk email that's personalized. So if you're trying to do a mail merge and you've got a message that you just send a whole bunch of people, but you want to make it seem you know, personal, the streak is really good. And I'll show you what it looks like. So if I, I just you know, start composing an email and I'm emailing away, I have a whole bunch of, um, I have way too many plugins and stuff. So actually my streak ones are a little bit hidden, but you see this is like this little box here. So it allows you to track uh, your email and it allows you to add snippets as well. So I have these snippets set up, which allow me to just kind of go, boop, you know, so I, I can have, yeah, I, I think I just had my cursor at the wrong place there, but yeah, I can just kind of easily just like chuck in this stuff and uh, you know, you can set up like sales email templates and this and that. And that just makes like life a lot, a lot easier. You can create snippets from drafts, etc. When it comes to the, the mail merge stuff, the way that works is you have these pipe, like Streak allows you to create these, these pipelines, right? And so I'll just uh, pick one here and say, you know, let's say I want to email all these people, you know, I'll just select them all here. I've got them sort of in this kind of spreadsheet type interface and I'll just click mail merge. I can email them all. But the fancy thing is if you have their first name filled in, I can then start going, inserting variables. So I can go insert variable, hey, where is it first? Like, okay, let's, oh, there we go, first name. Hey, first name, so great to um, hear from you, uh, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. And then if you hover over uh, those recipients, you can see, oh yeah, so that's what it's gonna look like for Jess and for Laura and da, 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 da. Anyway, that's super cool. 
in fact, you know, basically Streak is kind of a CR, an inbuilt CRM in Gmail uh, for you, which is, which is pretty cool. I'm actually using, like, I should be using Streak because it's so freaking, like, it's a lot more simpler than a lot of these other CRMs. I use, and, and this is probably silly of me, but I'm using um, HubSpot as my main CRM. I actually, so I actually have uh, two mail, email address, addresses because I'm migrating to uh, G Suite, but I'm still in that process. But, but basically, you'll, you'll, you'll see it better here that, uh, yeah, so I've got, you know, sort of HubSpot um, CRM here. This is another integration. And what this allows you to do is it also allows you to like log email. So it saves those to your CRM. The reason why I'm using HubSpot is because it just has like tons of integrations. It's completely free their CRM solution, at least, um, and lots of fancy pants thing. 